One of the things we have to do with a swap is make a new radius rod. Hasport actually makes a radius rod that has kind of a dropped center in it in order to clear this crank pulley. So what winds up happening is when you have the engine in here, it's a little bit wider than the D-series that came in originally, so it actually interferes with the radius rod. So we have to make a new one. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to replace this aluminum one with a steel one. So the way it's going to work is we're going to come back here, make a bend right underneath the crank pulley, it'll go up, and then it's going to be flat. We'll make a second bend that'll make it flat. Um, if you notice right here, the front radius rod is set up like this, so it doesn't really matter if we have the uh, radius rod coming down off that. No, I'm sorry, this front rod end is like this, so it doesn't matter if the radius rod comes down. But this back rod end is flat, so our tubing needs to come in kind of flat back there. So what we've done is we've purchased some one inch steel tube. On top of that, we have a couple threaded bungs, one with left hand, one with right hand threads. And we're going to go ahead and bend the tube, cut it down to length, and then we'll install it here where the radius rod would normally go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make it about that long. So we have our threaded spuds. They'll go in about the same length as the, we still got to leave the nut in there. Cut about an inch off that and then we'll see how much we need to cut off that. These are the ends that are going to go in here. Notice there's a nice little gap in there. We're going to leave the gap like this for tigging it. Since we're going to tig it, we don't need a big, huge gap in there. A small one will do just fine. So putting this up against the other one, we now see we need to cut it right about there to make it the same length as the current rod that we have. So we're just going to mark that and cut that. This is the new radius rod. We're gonna try this on now. We already got it attached back here. You understand like why we had to build one in the first place, which was to clear the crank pulley. Uh, Brian aligned it already. That we do by twisting the heim joints in and out as necessary. It's going well. Like we said, because of the case series, the crank pulley sits down a little bit lower. We had to make this dipped rod. The rod that normally comes with this particular setup is like this other one on the other side, it's straight. And unfortunately, when we had a straight rod, it was coming really close to our crank pulley. We were afraid once the uh, suspension was compressed, it was gonna make contact. And I know that's, that's happened on other cars. That's one of the reasons Hasport actually makes a uh, drop radius rod. But uh, since we weren't using Hasport radius rods, we were using a full race setup, we needed to make a radius rod. There's this tricky, cool, anodized aluminum. That was a little bit beyond our budget. And uh, so we just bent some steel. And yeah, it worked it out really well. I like it. Here. This is a radiator that you've used in other projects, right? Because uh, it's cost really cost effective. Yeah, yeah. there's less to 100 bucks typically with shipping, sometimes less. I think you got this one for 78 bucks. So yeah, I believe so. It's a first gen rabbit radiator, so Mark One Rabbit, I think, is how they refer to it. It has two side outlets, no radiator cap, uh, so you can flip it right or left to use it on B series or K series. It happens to tuck really nicely into a DA front end. It also fit in a EGEK front end with a little bit of trimming and as we're finding out today use a little trimming for this too. <laughs> sure so to make this work we had to add some stuff. Something he had brought up before that I, I think that everybody needs to know that it was budget doesn't always mean easy. Right. Right. Yeah sometimes when you're doing stuff budgety you wind up having to do a little bit more work in order to get it done but you know if you have time more time than you have money then that's the way to go. For sure. So along with trimming this, we did have to add some parts to it, which would be 
those post mounts, right? Yeah. So the the full race radiator that we ended up using actually has provisions for a radiator, and then we added these aluminum posts there because we can. Along with that, we ended up adding the fan switch into the uh, actual, I mean, I'm assuming this was a drain plug or something like that at one point, at least in the original radiator or yeah. rabbit. This was a blocked fitting, um, not even blocked, but it was closed fitting, and then we machined the uh, same thread pitch for um, a Honda fan switch. So now we're gonna trim some of the body so that this fits well. Like you were saying, it, um, that the radiator actually fit in between the, the core support, whereas here it just fits a little smaller. And so we're gonna trim some areas here on the end tanks so that it kind of sinks back in a little bit. And then it looked like it might have been touching up here on this or part here. Support. So it actually sits about right here. And so we'd like to see it sit back a little bit more, give us a little bit more clearance because this in, this intake manifold may or may not be changed. Okay, so at first we were going to just actually notch some areas over here for the intakes, all right? But then we discovered that there's actually two different layers here. So it's got a pinch weld here on the side bringing up the, from the bottom and then the layer over the top. So what we're now gonna do is we're just gonna kinda trim this along the straight edge to make it clean. And then to get from the bottom, we're most likely going to drop the the, uh, the traction bar here so that we can get in there and make a nice straight cut there. I like to try to keep the the um, the bottom of this radiator support to keep as much rigidity as possible. Alright, so hopefully this is going to give us the space we need. You know, we tried to mark it off, tried to get it as straight as we could. You know, we marked it off with some masking tape. Got a straight line. I'm going to come in here and uh, smooth this out with a flap disc. You know, so this is like what would be our cut wheel. And then we're going to come in there with like a flap disc, which is basically sandpaper. Smooth this out. Try to prevent, you know, us getting snagged. Maybe we might be able to put in some filler metal in here. We'll take a look at that. We got, we got the radiator support trimmed. We're going to see... How it looks. Drop it down in the traction bar here. Oh yeah. Oh my. You know, probably didn't have to trim the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, because uh, yeah, he got some footage of us doing that. This took. And we did trim the backside, which we got. All right. But it actually came out really clean. Almost doesn't look like other than the. Yeah, the paint scra scrapes there, but let's drop this on. Maybe we might have. We might yeah, have. yeah, you're right. So you could look right here. Yeah, we, we probably did have to trim it. You can kind of see how it swings back in here, but this is pretty much straight up and down. Jeez, look at that. Uh, if if someone didn't know any better, they would say this thing was intercooled. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got the radiator in. And once we got everything trimmed in, it fit really nicely. We took some of the paint that we bought for the motor mount over there and just kind of cleaned that area up since we did cut a lot of that out so that we didn't have any exposed steel. Um, but once we got it tucked in here, then we started discovering like other ways we wanted to mount the radiator. Originally, we were just going to try to use the original mount uh, holes and kind of tuck down. We thought it was going to do a lot of weird bends, but it um, turns out because of where the, the mount posts are, we actually came up with something fairly simple, which is easier to see with the T-bar out, out of the way. We're going to go back from behind, and we have some existing holes here that we're going to use. Let's check that out. So these guys, they're cut out, but we're not quite, I'm not quite exactly sure what those were originally intended for, but we know what we're going to be using them for now. Let's see what a, like a bolt looks like in there. Kind of get a full idea. These are right next to the, the threaded area for the T-bar, so it's not actually going through what mounts the T-bar that they're holes right next to it. Yeah, we'll see the trick. One of the things we're going to be doing is kind of making radiator hoses. The radiator obviously doesn't belong in here. Nobody makes a hose specifically for this application. So what I've got here is a piece of welding rod that I'm going to just take the general shape of the hose so that we can figure out how long and what, what bends it needs in it. I started off with a bend that should go right here, and I think I need a little more. So that's set up for the beginning, and then 
down here, it needs to be bent at a right angle. So the chances of us finding a radiator hose shaped exactly like this are kind of slim and nil. But if we can find something that is generally pointed in this direction here and pointed in this direction here, that may work. Remember, radiator hoses are rubber, so they are a little bit flexible. So we can do a little twisting and bending to make it fit a little bit better. But that's generally our orientation for the beginning and the ending of our radiator hose. So if we can find something that's like that, great. If not, what we'll do is we'll probably try to find one section that goes like that, another section with the right angle, and use a little uh, hose adapter in the middle of it with uh, some clamps. And that way, we might wind up making it with two pieces. So that's our lower radiator hose. Um, sometimes, by the way, I found much longer hoses that had a section in the middle that was shaped the way I wanted it to be, and we would just cut off the excess on either end and, and use that. Okay, for the upper radiator hose, it can be a little bit different. Moroso hose filler, and basically this allows you to put a radiator cap in line in your upper radiator hose. Now, first of all, we want it mounted at the highest point of the engine. That way it's easier to bleed everything out. We're probably just going to get a really short section of hose and connect it up to, connect it right up to our upper uh, radiator hose outlet. I guess technically it's an inlet. Then uh, once we do that, we're just going to find a piece of hose that's shaped generally like this. Coming out of our hose, this needs to come up and then kind of make a right angle and shoot right into the hose filler. Now uh, on the other cars I've done, I usually put it over here, but this particular manifold actually kind of tilts up slightly so I need to be able, I need to have room to kind of go with our intake over top of the radiator hose. Most of the time, uh, the places we go, AutoZone or uh, O'Reilly's, they allow us to go in the back and just kind of search through the hoses till we can find something that's shaped and sized the way we want it. Then we just purchase that from them. One of the things we need to do is make sure that we have cooling for our car. We found this inexpensive fan. It's actually directional. You can use it as a pusher or puller, but you need to make sure that the fan blades are oriented correctly. To change it, you just take this nut off, flip them over. You switch the positive and negative cables in order to uh, make it either a pusher or puller. We will do a test to make sure it's working properly. These fans that have the curve on them, they're actually directional. If you're running it backwards as a pusher fan and you don't have the blade flipped as well, it's totally inefficient. It just moves a bunch of air around the blades and not really through the fan. So you need to be careful about that. Now these things come with mounting system right here. Basically you have these posts that wind up getting jammed through your fins and then through one of the holes on the, on the radiator. And then it's connected using these springs and this little one-way clip. I'm not gonna bother pulling them out because I'm not gonna use them. One of the things I don't like about that is Quite often the radiator will sit directly against the runners and it'll kind of mash the fins around, not to mention it could eventually wear a hole through the passage. So we're going to do something different. What we're going to do is we're going to make a bracket that is specifically for this radiator. I've done this a few times. The way it's going to work is we're going to place it over here on the transmission side of the radiator and it'll actually be suspended off the radiator so it's not rubbing up against it, although the gap will be fairly close so that it has good pull, you know, shrouding basically. I've seen some radiators that come with an aluminum plate that's big and huge and then you have your radiator fan kind of up against that. That's fine for driving around in traffic, but if you're running the car fast, you actually want all this area open because the air, it's going to cool much better with air blowing all the way through it. This is a drag car, cooling's not super critical because of such short distances. We're going to do this anyway anyway because it'll work better and actually have less risk, uh, wind resistance. You won't have air bouncing off this big shroud you quite often see on these types of radiators. So the way these brackets are going to work is I'm going to make basically a piece, a rectangular piece of aluminum and it's going to loop around the front edge of this and then bolt onto here. That'll be on both sides. And the fact that you bolt it down to the fan is actually gonna clamp it onto the radiator.
slots here are actually designed for 10 millimeter nuts or M6 nuts. Usually I use a nylock nut, I didn't have any of those, so I just kind of took some flange nuts, Honda flange nuts, ground the flange off so to make them, you know, proper size, slid them inside. And what that's going to allow me to do is now bolt on my new bracket. There you go, it's positively locked in there. Again, this is the bottom side. So we'll put it like that, right there. Now you can see the top, it comes pretty close to the edge. So here's my top bracket. Same thing here. There we go. Now the only thing left, left to do is change this plug for the round one that comes on the EF. But now we know what our basic radiator hose shape needs to be. Then what happened was uh, we did the upper radiator hose. On the upper radiator hose, we had something a little bit different going on. We've got this Moroso uh, filler neck that goes in line on the radiator hose. We're basically going to put it right here. Initially, we were going to try and, on mine, I usually put them over here somewhere, but we decided to put it right here so that we could take the intake air tube and come out, you know, over top if we want to do a short ram or over top to go down for cold air. Robert then actually did the hard work. Yeah, I wouldn't go find the hoses. Yeah, so go he, find them. So he hands these to me, he's like, hey, go find these hoses. So I gotta go back, literally, I had to go and ask them, hey, can I go back there and dig around in your hoses until I can find something that matches up? And he's actually was surprised that I was able to find something very close to what we were looking for. Because he had explained to me before, sometimes uh, the hoses wouldn't be exactly the bend that he needs so that he would find one that maybe has the bend somewhere along the line and then we would trim those up. But we got pretty, I was able to find them pretty close. I actually didn't know the cost of these, all you know, because when you're in the back of the parts stores, they just have these hanging. And all you have to do is part. All you have is part numbers. You don't know how much they cost. Then we go up to the front. We have two hoses, front and uh, upper and lower, and uh, they were seventy dollars. I'm like, ouch, you know. Like, and even even the clerk was like, that hurt, didn't it? You know. <laughs> she said she said that. And so I came back here. I was like, okay, I got the hoses, but they're seventy bucks. Like, is this is this how it normally is? And he's not like, very budgety. Right. And he he even thought that was a little a little pricey. So um, well, being that this is budget build, he actually did a little bit of research. And now, now we have part numbers, so we'll know exactly what hoses you're, you're going to need, which will be uh, in the article on vtacacademy.com. Right. And then... And we went to Amazon, and lo and behold, uh, we found uh, the upper hose instead of 20, $24. $24. Yeah. It was uh, $15. And then we found our second hose, instead of being $39, was only $28. So we're saving... We're so money. we're saving some money. We're saving you some money. Right. So now you're going to have part numbers. You know which hoses work and where to find them for not $70. <laughs> for not $70. <laughs> yeah. While they're finishing up the wiring harness, we finished up our radiator. We went ahead and powder coated these parts because or the brackets because we can. So this is the plug that comes on the fan here. So we're going to replace these pins with the with the chassis side. Needs to fit that. So uh, now what I have are basically the same pin, although this is a gold style version of the same pin. And I'm going to be crimping those on to our wires right here. So they'll get crimped on. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is actually put the insulator on because it's a pain to put on afterwards. Oops. We'll put it on leave it on. I think I actually need a slightly longer bit of lead there. 
Next thing we did was we took a look at our other connector and the black is on the clip side, which is this side right here. So when we insert them, we insert it, the black in there, the blue on the other side. This ensures that it rotates the correct way. By the way, we'll test that out to make sure it is actually rotating the correct way. If not, we will flip it around. You have to be careful with these fans. Not only does the fan need to rotate in the correct direction, but on top of that, the fan blade needs to be on correctly. If the fan blade is on backwards from the way it's spinning, it'll just circulate the air around. It doesn't actually push or pull. This particular one should be set up to pull. We'll test it out, make sure air is flowing through. If not, we'll make whatever changes we need to make. You know, I was just gonna say, let's drop it like it's hot, but I just realized that it's not hot. Yeah, this works. <laughs> The 108, we set a record? It was 108 today? It was 100 today, we set a record. Did we set a record? We tied the record, I'm sorry, we tied it. Uh, it 1989. Okay, so that's the install of our radiator. I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> Next time. Let's try it this way. Yeah, it was pretty warm. Okay, was... so it's the, it's the hoses right there. Kind of, okay, here we go. There we go. We're gonna shorten this end, right? But if you look, that the radiator hose is raised, okay? Then it has the bend towards where our um, inlet is for the radiator, but it also curves, curves down at the same time and then kinks back up. And so that means it's also gonna clear our intake manifold without any like weird creases in, it, in the hose. See, it's got all the bends we want. Bends up, bend over. So now we're gonna add another section here, which... So it's our choice. We could end up using some pieces that we cut off to see what works best. There might even be a section of that. It's kind of... But they got another straight off of something else. Oh yeah, and then it's not really the size. So I think it's going to be a section of what we cut off will end up working. So we just want to use the, the straighter, the straighter section of that. Yeah, I think that's what's going to work. This bend goes right up to the factory thermostat housing. Like, there's aftermarket companies that make a, a thermostat housing that twists and turns based on what you might need. This one we actually don't have to replace the thermostat housing. This hose actually works really well. It's got the right bend that we need, along with the right bend that we need down here. There's just a little bit more length than we need, so we're gonna trim that. Oh, look at that, dude, it's too, it's too easy. Ooh. Hi, Lo. Yeah, I need some. I just need some hose clamps. You know, you think we just take this off, but I'm afraid to unclip these. You know, they're a million years old, they're gonna break right away. So we're just, just gonna leave it on there. It's annoying.